Hey guys, this is going to be my review of the Mangrid Tea. Um, received these last week and I um, have to excuse that video, by the way. I need to apologize. My hands were filthy in that video. I, I washed them, but I'd been wrenching on my bike. And uh, when the package came from the postman, or actually UPS, I was like, wow, I want to get this open now and, and check it out, but I wanted to do a video, so I went and washed my hands real quick, but I just didn't get the deep cleaning to get all the grease out, and anyway, <clears throat> so sorry about that last one. The um, These are interesting, so when I first popped them in and listened to them that day, uh, just to try to get a quick listen, I wasn't really impressed, and, and so I started playing around with the tips, and they actually come with some very good tips. I don't usually like the foam tips that uh, some other people like. I, I like the rubber ones, and I like the these kind of stiff ones. They're like spiral dot that come with them. Um, these work really well to seal. Let me see if I can get you. These work really well to seal on my ear, and they have a nice wide opening. When they pinch down, it makes the, when the opening is smaller, for some reason it makes the base more intense, and I, I don't really like that. It's it muddies it up with the wide opening kind of allows the IEM to do what it's supposed to do and these give a good seal on my ears so once I got the good seal I was I was pretty impressed I listened to these for a couple hours straight in fact uh, I, I started going through my typical tracks that I use for testing the ones that I know really well and I started just listening to the whole album and I, I ended up listening to this the whole album of Alexis Cole I listened to uh, Amy Winehouse Amy Winehouse sounds better on these than possibly any of my other IEMs um, and why that is exactly hmm, these have these have a really excellent stage um, and stage is, is you know a little bit uh, um, dependent or subjective dependent on the person that's listening to it and what they think that is but I really felt like I could hear instruments out and away from me and not only that it had very good imaging so I could not only hear the instruments out and away from me but I could I could make out where they were at I could hear you know a, a bass on the Alexis Cole album I could hear the uh, the string bass behind me off to my my left I could hear her she felt like she was like right behind my head so it, not really like in front of me but behind me um, and I could hear the drums and the cymbals off to the right and actually kind of back like behind her so I could really the imaging was really good and the stage was excellent I listened to my uh, Diana Krall live in Paris and a lot of songs on there just sounded just excellent with this with this set um, very uh, I really I really like this set I really like it a lot um, very smooth delivery of, of music like nothing hurt when I was listening to it. Detail was very good. Bass, very good. Treble, very good. Mids were um, excellent. The, let me go through a list here. <clears throat> so Amy Winehouse, there's a song, Now You Know. Um, the bass on that was, was very good. And, and I'm going to tell you, I compared these two, whether you think it's a fair comparison or not. I decided to compare them to the um, Fearless S8Z. And I did that because they're similar in design. This has six BAs in it. It has four for the mids and two for the treble. And then it has a dynamic driver for the bass. Um, and so I wanted to test these against something that had a lot of BAs in it and was higher end like this supposedly is. I mean, this is a $300 set of IEMs. Um, it's two ninety nine, so it's three hundred bucks. The Fearless was a lot more; it was five eighty nine. But it's, I think it's still a pretty fair comparison. I will say that the Fearless is better. It's better in almost every way, um, but not a lot better. Not like significantly like like. There's no way I'd buy these over the Fearless, right? I mean, if I if someone said you can have this or you can have the Fearless. Or if someone said, no, we're going to take your Fearless and just let you have this, I'd probably be okay. I mean, these sound really good. Um, what I found was that definitely bass, these are better than the 
than the Fearless. They have more bass because they're using Dynamic Driver, and, and I like Dynamic Driver bass. Um, the, the beginning snare in, in that song, uh, Amy Winehouse, Now You Know, you can kind of hear this snare cymbal that's crashing right in the beginning. Um, and that was, was better on the, uh, um, the S8Z than this. <clears throat> the S8Z felt clearer and wider to me. Uh, not wider, but more, had, like it had more air. But um, the stage on this felt better. This felt like it had a wider stage than the S8Z. What, what I noticed was that the high end on this sometimes felt veiled, if that makes sense. It felt like, it felt like there was something between me and, this, and the, the treble, something between me and the cymbals, me and the higher pitch tones. And I wanted to, it was like a piece of paper and I just wanted to move it out of the way so I could really hear things clearly. I, I kind of felt that way a little bit with these on some songs, whereas with the S8Z, it was just dead clear and it was I didn't get that effect at all. Um, another song I listened to, I changed it up this time and I went with some classical. I did uh, Arvo Part, and I'm not going to read the, the title because it's freaking long. It's like 15 words long, but I, I will put it in the text of the description on this so that you can go check it out yourself. But uh, it's basically Symphony Number no. 1, Polyphonic 1, Canons, I think is what it is. Um, so the detail on these was excellent and the treble was very good. Um, at the beginning of that song, there's a, there's like a very, uh, in the back sort of, um, cymbals and, and other like bells being played. <clears throat> um, and there's also a, a lot of bass drum, like big bass drum, like the kind you hear with, with symphonies, with orchestras. Um, and there's a lot of bassoons. I could hear them really clearly in there. So this was able to reproduce all that very well. Like the, the timber felt very good to me. Um, I'm sorry. I, just so you guys know, I, I've been kind of looking up this timber thing because there's a lot of reviewers saying one thing or another about timber. And I found out that I'm wrong about this. And I, I first of all apologize to you guys for, for getting it wrong and then giving that information to you. But I'm going to tell you what I found out. Timber is actually pronounced timbre so that's the first thing i'm not pronouncing it right it's not timber it's timbre even though it is spelled t-i-m-b-r-e it's pronounced timbre i didn't look up exactly why that is i'm guessing it's probably not a, an english root word it's probably from another language and that's why it's pronounced timbre um but my description of timbre and what it is was actually in line with what i read and the videos i listened to by some college professors talking about timbre so it is the separation of or the tonal quality um, of the sound coming out. So basically, if you have a trumpet and a violin playing the same note at the same amplitude, you can still hear the difference. And you can hear the difference be, or the thing that the reason you can hear the difference is the timbre is different. So that or the timbre is being produced correctly. So the timbre is that difference in tonality between two instruments, even though they're the same note and the same volume. Um, so, and timbre, really good timbre, can lead to a very realistic reproduction of music. So, uh, that said, um, in that Arvo part, which I'll tell you, this, that particular track sounds a lot like uh, music from the movie uh, Psycho. Um, but it's still it's excellent. There's this very strong bass in there that crashes in a lot and these de Develop that and reproduce it really really well um, <clears throat> Next one I used was uh, Robin Trower about to begin which is one of my favorite Robin Trower tra uh, tracks The detail and the treble were super good. The bass was way better on these than on the S8Z Well, I shouldn't say way better, but it was better. It was it was good Um the S8Z just can't produce that deep thumping bass because of the way that they produce bass. They use a BA instead of a uh, um, dynamic driver. Uh, the stage on these was also better than on the uh, S8Z. Um, when I was listening to Robin Trower on these, I really felt like the music was... It was like I was listening, listening to it on a home system. If that makes sense. So on a home system, <clears throat> the music feels like it's really all around you, and you can pick out the instruments, and um, it, and it gives you that kind of uh, feeling of the vibration of the music, right? I could really get that sense with these, so that was really good. I like that. 
um, I could pick the instruments out really good on that song and where they were. It, it, it just, things felt like they sounded right, if that makes sense. Um, I've listened, because I've listened to Robin Trower since I was a kid, I've listened to that song, I don't know, a hundred thousand times. I can't even tell you how many times. And it, it sounded really good on these. It sounded like when I put it on my home system or on really high end systems, it sounded very good. Um, <clears throat> another track I used, Rod Regal and Gabriella, uh, and I used from the Metavolution album, I used the song Cretona Days, which is a weird name, right? Cretona Days. Um, these things are made for guitar. That, that's all I can tell you. These things, guitar, the stage, the timbre, is is fantastic with these when it comes to guitar if you listen to a lot of guitar music these are definitely the i am for you there was a couple of albums i listened to over the weekend um that i like with uh, guitar and i listened to it on these and i just couldn't stop listening it was it was excellent the smoothness that they deliver on the guitar sound um and on on string guitar and on, even on electric guitar um it's very pleasing to listen to it's like it just made me smile while I was listening to in fact my wife was like looking at me like I was a weirdo because I had this smile on my face while I was listening to uh, uh, Rodrigo and Gabriela um, and I don't think she knew what was going on the detail on these for that for guitars and whatnot and, and for most things was was very good it was you know some the detail on some high-end IEMs can be a little too crispy sometimes um, to the point where it can be disorienting or painful and with these i didn't get that the timber the not the timber sorry the treble was there and the detail was there um on everything without being painful or being too crispy where it almost felt grainy you know uh, it, it just felt smooth um last but not least i listened to uh, alexis cole um her song uh, beautiful friendship because that has a lot of great things in it uh, just there's so many um pieces in there her voice is incredible for one um the stage was really good on these it made, just made me feel like i was in i was there in a room listening to her you know in, inside like a a bar or something where there's a lot of uh, room around me and i could just hear everything echoing so it, it was really good um the treble was excellent in that song uh, at the beginning of that song there's a lot of cymbal work you can really hear that going on in the background. Uh, it's a typical jazz symbol, you know, um, and the hi-hat. And you could really hear that well with these, it's, but not to the point where it felt out of place. It felt like it was where it was supposed to be. I would say that the mids, in some cases, felt a little forward, like her voice felt a little forward to me, like maybe it was a little bit brighter than it should be, but it still sounded good. These produce vocals, especially female vocals, very well. And again, I would attribute that to that dynamic driver in there, as well as the four BAs for the, um, used for the mids. So the bass line, excellent. Uh, Alexis Cole has a lot of, um, in fact, all of her songs that I've listened to uh, in the album that I have um, use a string bass, and you can really hear it. And, and these produce it really well. In fact, there's a um, second song by her, uh, uh, Alone Together. Uh, the beginning of that song is excellent for treble and drums um, and for snare, uh, a snare drum. Um, you really hear it, and it's the, the timbre is just fantastic on that. It sounds really good. Um, I, I want to say it was one of my favorite listens that I've had of that song was, was using the Manger T. It, it really was good. Um, and in fact, if I go back to the first one, the Lexus Cole Alone Together, uh, if you go to, if you get that song, Lexus Cole Alone Together, and you, and I use FUBAR, so FUBAR shows the time different, but um, playing that song at 135, which is, it reverses, right? So as FUBAR is playing, it starts out at like three minutes and 50 seconds, and then as it's, it basically counts down. So at 135, which is 135, one minute and 35 seconds from the end of the song um there's a, a string bass that comes in and you know does like a solo and uh just sounds fantastic i mean it's the the timbre is so good on it and i really was impressed when i heard it and i could hear it very clearly and i liked it much better than when i listened to the s8z so um that's kind of where i'm at on these the i i really like them uh I, I'm not sure. I think they might be a keeper, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. The cable, um, going to some specifics about the IEMs themselves, it's, it's a two-pin 
uh, fits really snug, no problems at all with that. They're, they're an odd shape. They're kind of a weird shape if you put them up to another uh, set of IEMs they're, or compare them to others. They have this odd shape, and I wasn't sure, but they're actually very comfortable. I didn't have any problems with, with comfort or with fit. Um, I, tips are important, so if you get these, please play with the tips. I think the tips they come with are actually really good, which I can't say for a lot of IEMs, I end up not using any of the tips. Um, in fact, here's the tips for the S8Z. I didn't use any of them because I didn't like them. I used my own. But these, the ones they come with, um, really good. The uh, It's got the little mangrid in there. Looks really looks really nice. Um, the fit in my ear was good. The cable is very nice. It's It's got a you know the ear wrap so that or this uh, plastic wrap is heated up and then shaped so that it'll fit around your ear, the loop. And what they did is they put this little metal cap on the end of it. And I'm, I'm sure that, that was to, because of the little flare that happens at the end of the plastic when they're heat shrinking on there. Um, but it looks good and it protects it. And I, I really like it. And you don't feel this. I was thinking I'm going to feel that in my ear or something, but I didn't feel it at all. It was uh, very comfortable. The cable has a very nice feel to it. Um, no chin slider which is a-okay with me I could care less um, I, I rarely ever use those um, but the split is really nicely done the um, the uh, plug is a 2.5 is the one I ordered and I guess you get the same cable with all these and, and you can choose 2.5 3.5 or 4.4 um, Pentacon the I like the 2.5 because it I have a lot of devices that are 2.5, so and I have an, a little adapter I can use if I don't have a 2.5 on a specific device, I can just use this thing. So, uh, sorry guys, I had a battery go dead in the camera, so I had to reset everything. So, what do I think about these um, in the in the end, right? Do I do I think they're worth 300 bucks? Um, yeah, I think they're worth 300 bucks. Uh, I think, you know, they've got a good cable. They've got a pretty nice case. Uh, I, I, that's the really matter, right? You can always get all this on your own. Really, the, the, this is what matters right here, um, these IEMs. Um, and I can tell you there are things that I've listened to that don't cost $300 that sound just as good as these. Right, uh, or that I like as much as I like these. Um, the blonde B, not the blonde. I'm sorry, the Shozi um, B2s. I really, really like those. I I would say I like them just as much as I like these, but for different reasons. Those fit incredibly well. I can't even feel them in my ear when I've got them in, and they have a really nice sound that I like. A very, a very calm sound. A very dark tuned, but but detailed sound. Um, these have a really great sound signature as well and they have good stage and they have you know good detail and good bass um i i would say they just make it into me saying yeah they're worth 300 bucks like just make it into that but you know the s8z's sound a lot clearer and cleaner but don't have as good a bass and in some instances don't have as good a stage and they're quite a bit more and, and i kind of feel like the s8z is worth its price so i would say yeah these these are worth the 300 dollars price tag if you're into this hobby and you don't mind spending that kind of money and you're looking for a, a a good experience these i think deliver a good experience they the problem now <laughs> i mean the the problem that i'm running to into at least and i don't know you know how many other people are but that do this but um all the iems coming out are generally pretty good you know, it's not like there's massive difference between everything. I, there are some that are crap, of course, right? And and those just don't even get reviewed typically. Um, or they get caught and someone, like I did a review on, on a pair uh, a few weeks ago that, you know, I, I basically said they were crap, don't buy them. Um, and, and I did that and I felt okay about that because they really were. And I just happened to stumble onto them, you know, but if someone had sent me a bunch of IEMs to review, and that was one of them. I may not have even bothered reviewing it, you know. But th these IEMs and a lot of the IEMs in this price range all sound very similar with slight differences. And sometimes you're looking for that special experience, that, that IEM that has something different, you know. And I, I don't know that these have something different, but they definitely sound really good. So, you know, it's up to you. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good buy. I wouldn't 
I wouldn't think anyone's wasting their money spending two, uh, 300 bucks on these. So, all right, well, I hope this, this you know, review helps you in some way, and uh, take care.